back again with some more Stargate. This time I'm taking a look at my personal favourite of the Stargate shows. These are the top 10 best Stargate Atlantis episodes. Number 1. The Storm and the Eye Cheating with the two-parter right out of the gate, but when it's a premise as cool as Die Hard in Atlantis, can you really blame me? A massive storm is brewing on Lantia, so almost everyone is evacuated from the city. However, seeing this as an opportunity to get even, the Janai send a strike force to seize supplies from Atlantis. When Shepard steps in to stop them, both sides are soon locked into a cat and mouse game. I've always liked the Janai as villains, and while their first episode is nothing special, you can really see where they're coming from as a people, what the conflict with the Wraith has done to them, and why they see Atlantis as their enemy. Amidst the well-executed action sequences, the battle of wits between Shepard and the Janai team leader Kolya is also really enjoyable. This hint of moral greyness would later be capitalised on in a future arc, but in these two episodes, this is a really thrilling early adventure for Atlantis. Number 2. The Siege for me, this is when Atlantis went from a good show to a great show. Wraith Hive ships have discovered Atlantis and are on their way to attack. This puts the crew into a race against time to shoot, engineer, and science their way to survival. Much like SG-1's first big clash with the Gawuld, this season finale battle against the Wraith is thrilling and spectacular in every way. Watched back to back, this three-parter is a brilliant exercise in escalating tension. In part one, the Hive ships have entered the system, so McKay and a few others attempt to use a space-based weapon to wipe them out. Part two sees a pitched battle to defend the city from attack, and part three concludes with the blowout finale and the introduction of one of the show's best villains. It's a marathon in great action, visual effects, and edge-of-the-seat thrills with a clever resolution and potential for more great installments in the future. Number 3. Runner Ford is out, Cal Drogo is in. After finding a dead wraith, the Atlantis crew think Ford is responsible. When Shepard and company go looking for him, they find Ronan, a former soldier who has been taken by the wraith to be used in a hunting sport. I mentioned that the siege introduces one of the show's best villains, and the reappearance of Ford here proves this statement. Being driven mad by his addiction to wraith enzyme and his personal clashes with Shepard make for great drama. And adding Jason Momoa to the regular cast after this introduction was a great move. Ronan's backstory is pretty standard stuff, but it's Momoa's physical presence and chilled out attitude which makes us a surprisingly reserved but charismatic character. With some well-crafted fight scenes and chases to boot, this is a fun yarn with solid writing and a welcome addition to the main cast. Number 4. Michael a soldier wakes up at the Atlantis infirmary with no memory of who he is. He was told he was captured by the Wraith, but as he attempts to get back on his feet, he soon discovers the terrifying truth. He wasn't captured by the Wraith, he was a Wraith. Episodes like this are the reasons I prefer Atlantis over SG-1 personally. While the Gold system lords are good villains in a scenery-chewing way, the Michael storyline adds so much dimensionality to the show's overarching conflict. Thanks to the limited perspective and fantastic performance from Star Trek Enterprise alum Connor Trenier, we completely empathise with his point of view and relate to the betrayal felt by him as he uncovers the truth. We find ourselves rooting for what has been the main antagonist of the series thus far, and as events unfold, the regular cast suddenly don't seem as wholesome anymore. It's these clashes, not over MacGuffins and dull desires for conquest, but multiple perspectives between characters which give Atlantis the nuance I feel SG-1 sometimes lacked. Number 5. Sunday during a mandatory day of rest for the Atlantis crew, a sudden and mysterious explosion sends the crew into a race against time before any more lives are lost. The story structure of this episode is masterfully conceived. The actual inciting incident and subsequent emergency only takes up a small part of the episode. The majority of the runtime flashes back, and we get to see how most of our regular cast choose to sit back and relax. We see Dr. Weir struggling to reconcile her personal life with her work, Shepard and Ronan in some friendly competition, followed by a heart-to-heart, -heart. McKay and Katie Brown engage in a frankly adorable romance, but then the episode tips its hand by showing us what turns out to be the final day in the life of Dr. Carson Beckett. I will admit that a tense third act is tainted slightly with what feels like a sudden and cheap character death, however the fallout of the characters reacting to his death really tugs at the heartstrings in an effective way. The fan outcry at Beckett's death was so strong at the time, he was eventually contrived back to life in a later instalment. But it just goes to show how well this episode accomplished what it set out to do. Number 6. This Mortal Coil Stargate Atlantis does course oblivion, sort of. When an Azuran probe crashes into Atlantis, McKay wishes to investigate, only to be stonewalled by those around him. Soon McKay, Shepard, Ronan, and Taylor all start noticing people acting odd and other weird events. After investigating to the best of their ability, they discover they are in fact not themselves, but replicator clones. Much like the Michael episode, telling the story from this perspective allows the audience to completely empathise with those we've largely been told are enemies. The mystery of the strange behaviour is enticing, the interactions between the duplicates and their real selves are fascinating, and the finale 
finale concludes a fitting and sincere arc for the replicant versions of the main characters. Number 7. Be All My Sins Remembered For all my talk of moral nuance and inventive plotting, sometimes space battles are just great. A shaky alliance is built up between humans, travellers and the Wraith in order to attack the Replicator homeworld. What results is a classic sci-fi TV adventure of action and techno babble. But this episode is elevated by the absolutely spectacular space battle which basically headlines the entire thing. The episode is a long build up to the action set piece of the finale paired with a brilliantly wacky techno babble solution to defeat the bad guys. Nothing new, but done very well. Number 8. The Last Man Upon returning through the Stargate, Shepard finds Atlantis abandoned, the ocean gone, and the sun changed into a red dwarf. A hologram of an elderly Dr. McKay reveals Shepard has travelled 48,000 years into the future, and Michael has conquered the galaxy. The framing device is a simple and creative travel back in time to stop disaster plot, but the meat of the story are the always fun what if future scenarios. The chronicling of the often tragic ends of our main characters are altogether poignant and engrossing such as Ronan becoming the leader of his own army, McKay and Dr. Keller falling in love, and McKay eventually losing her to Michael's virus. The episode has a kind of Arthur C. Clarke childhood's end feeling to it, with Shepard possibly being the last human being alive, and the encyclopedia of the vast shifting galactic landscape wonderfully delivered by David Hewlett a thoughtful detour from a storyline which was already good by itself. Number 9. First Contact and the Lost Tribe Dr. Daniel Jackson comes to Atlantis to help Dr. McKay search for the lab of Janus, an ancient inventor. When the duo will inadvertently activate a strange device, they are soon kidnapped. The kidnappers order them to activate a device to cripple the Wraith, however it could have unforeseen consequences for the rest of the galaxy. As I mentioned in my SG-1 video, crossovers like this are always welcome in my book, and the chemistry between Daniel Jackson and Dr. McKay is endlessly entertaining. The smart-ass, pompous scientist versus the quiet, kind demeanour of a bookworm. The ensuing plot surrounding the mysterious device and what it does is both creative and nail-biting. Rather than the blunt force of space battle upon space battle, the conflict is predicated on clever uses of established in-universe technology and misunderstanding of various events from multiple perspectives. Viewers will be at the edge of their seat as the battle of wits and solving of mysteries unfold into an exhilarating climax. Number 10. Enemy at the Gate Sargate Atlantis was unfortunately cancelled after five seasons, so a conclusion had to be put together really quickly. The success of this finale is a true testament to the talents of everyone behind the show. Having received a message from an alternate timeline, it's a long story, a rogue Wraith Hive ship has retrofitted its hyperdrive and is on course for Earth. The Atlantis crew race to destroy it before millions are fed upon. Much like SG-1's The Lost City, this series finale works because everything is working at the top of its game. The plot is pretty standard stuff, but it facilitates enough poignant character moments and large-scale action set pieces to bring the audience one last fun adventure with the Atlantis crew. Rather than a cheap cop-out, the minds behind Atlantis made sure to deliver a grand series finale for the fans. Many plot threads are unfortunately left dangling for the show afterwards, such as Dr. Weir still being there after the Azuran's destruction and some rogue Asgard still knocking about, but in its five-season run, Stargate Atlantis was able to expand the universe in many cool ways, with well-written characters and storylines. I wish it had more time to do what it wanted to do, but as endings go, this is pretty satisfying. What are your favourite episodes? I know for certain I had to miss out a load of good ones. Atlantis has a lot of multiple episode part stories, so comment below which ones you think deserve a shout out. Now if you follow me on Facebook or are on Patreon, which is a great way to support this channel by the way, you'll know I'll be taking a wee break from making videos. I just graduated university and I'll be moving house soon. Plus I also just want to spend some time with friends and family. Until then, my short film Near Death will be released on Vimeo next week. I'll be posting the link across all my social media pages. When I do come back with regular vids, I aim to upload more frequently and with some new content I hope you'll enjoy. Until then guys, have a good one as always. Live long and prosper.